Hello. Uh, let's talk about some shit. God. Uh, so, I don't like to make videos that revolve around any form of drama. I, I'm actually, like, physically repulsed by that. Like, I get physically ill when I see YouTube drama. I'm like, oh, God. I started a YouTube channel to talk about movies. That's me. I like to talk about movies. I like to make movies. To do something outside of that, it's always a little weird for me. But to me, this doesn't really constitute as drama. This is um, about the legality of paying someone or a number of people for working for them. And that's something I'm going to talk about. Now, if some of you follow me on Twitter, you will have seen that I wrote uh, yesterday that Defy Media owes me a considerable amount of money. Uh, they owe a lot of people money. This isn't just me. So, uh, background story for you. Defy Media was an MCN, a multi-channel network. Uh, some people might wonder, why would you join a network? What is the benefit of joining a network? Well, back when I joined Defy, there was a considerable scare for YouTubers that Google AdSense might just drop you. There were a lot of people that had AdSense that just got dropped for no reason. It was like a big epidemic for a while. I don't know if you guys remember that. And so a lot of people were like, well, a network provides protection. They're like the middleman between you and YouTube, or in my case, me and movie studios that wanted to copyright claim every single video I ever made. Um, I'm so glad I joined a network to avoid copyright claims, because that's never been a problem ever again. <laughs> Look, I laugh because I have to laugh. Um, this is a very serious situation, and it's actually very sad for a lot of people. But you got to laugh sometimes. You have to, you just got to keep it real. Um, so I joined Defy because they promised that I would become a managed partner, uh, which YouTube uh, this year has done away with that option. But a managed partner was then taken out of the copyright algorithm and so the only way to give you a copyright claim was if someone physically, manually watched your video and said, nope, we own that claim. You wouldn't get those bot claims anymore if you were a managed partner. That was reserved for a select few trusted YouTubers who had proved that they didn't break the law. And so I was a managed partner, thanks to Defy. And that definitely lessened the claims for a while. They eventually came back. Um, and I always had to fight them myself. And I won every single time. Never lost a claim. Uh, from what I can remember. Um, there's been a few times in the past before I was more confident about fair use laws. I'm just trying to be very transparent. I remember a few times in the past where I was a little afraid and I would just delete the video. Like if it was an older review. But not anymore. I know my shit now and I know what the law is now. So I joined Defy under that pretense. Um, they also promised me 100% of my AdSense earnings. They would take nothing. But if they were to bring me a sponsorship deal, then I would uh, give them a percentage of that. So that's how they made money for me. Um, all was okay for a while, although the company, you know... I'm still a little bit leery about what all I can say in this video because despite the fact that if you've seen the news, Defy Media has shut down, I'm just afraid about like any type of repercussions on myself or my wife or my family in a legal way based off of any information I might divulge to you. So I have to be careful uh, without naming names or any specifics. I saw a lot of behind the scenes things at Defy that just seemed wishy-washy. I never witnessed anything illegal. I never witnessed anything in which someone might immediately stand up and say, that's wrong. Um, I just saw a lot of flakiness, really. You know, just a lot of people who weren't really 100%, you know? You know, you have people you meet in life and you can rely on them and you know for a fact, I can rely on you, you're going to be there for me no matter what. If I'm in a rut, you'll help me. And then you have people like Defy where you're like, I hope you help me <laughs> if I need you. And that's kind of how it was for a while. I stayed with them because they were paying me uh, regularly for a while and things were going fine. I was getting a few sponsorships, which helped with the bills and stuff like that. Um, then after I re-signed with them for 
what became the final year of Defy Media's run, things started getting worse. Um, the copyright claims increased, and they called me and said, hey, um, we're in a bind. Can we take 10% of your earnings every single month? And despite the fact that I really did not want to do that, I agreed. Um, so they got 10% of my earnings for a while. Um, eventually, they got a lot more than that, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, I did not start my channel to make money. I've said this before, but I'll say it again. I didn't make any money on YouTube for like three years, and I still reviewed at least one movie a week. If anyone ever accuses me of doing this for the money, you're just, uh, you're inaccurate. I've enjoyed the fact that I can now support myself doing this, just as anyone would love to support themselves doing something they enjoy, but it was never about the money. That doesn't mean I'm just gonna sit here and go, oh, okay, company, big LA company, take my money, enjoy it, buy a yacht, have fun, pay your bills with what I've earned. Nevertheless, um, I accepted the fact that they wanted 10% of my earnings and I moved on. Then throughout 2018, the payments started to become increasingly late. And when I say late, I mean like two weeks late. And I would email them and like, hey, you know, I mean, all of our bills come out on the first of the month. Where's our check? I have a mortgage, electric, sewer, gas, water, you know, all that shit. I'm an adult. It's weird. And um, they would say, oh, it's coming next Friday. That was like the quote, their favorite thing to say. It'll be there next Friday. Payments go out Friday. That Friday comes. Hey, where is it? Oh, it'll be in there by Monday. You know, business day thing. It's the weekend. Okay, I'll wait till Monday. Hey, where is it? Oh, it'll be there by Friday. Son of a bitch. <laughs> and it would, it would go like that for the majority of this year, really. And I never went public about it because, as I said, I, I hate talking about this kind of shit. Um, but this has gone, you know, beyond your normal drama, and this is a little bit more important. I asked them when my contract expired, and that is February 28th, 2019. I would hear rumblings from other YouTube uh, networks that were trying to sign me on. They would email me and be like, hey, uh, I'm hearing things about Defy. Do you want to join our network? And I'm like, I can't break my contract. If you read the Defy Media contract, it's horrifically uh, trapping. It's extremely stacked against you. They had so many options legally against me if I did or said anything wrong. You know, they basically own my ass. So I had to be really careful. Um, so I couldn't leave, even though I was looking for other options. Then I heard that the company was probably going to shut their doors at the end of the year. And the very next day, a news article came out about that, that the company would be closing at the end of the year. And I went, shit, all right, well, I, I better start looking around for real, like really being careful. The same time I was being emailed by Defy, uh, they were telling me that my payments were coming for um, September. My September payment was supposed to arrive at the end of October or the very beginning of November. They kept saying, well, it'll come on Friday. And then that Friday happened and I got an email saying, Look, looks like we spoke too soon, it'll be next Friday. And I said, okay, I'll wait again. This is the first week of November now. And then um, the very next day, right after that first news article about them shutting at the end of the year, all employees of Defy woke up without a job. Defy just closed. Gone. So that's bad for all the employees that work there. Some of the people there I know, and they're fine people, stand-up people, despite working for a very uh, corrupt company. And it's um, really bad for all the channels that were still partnered through them like mine, because that September... Uh, AdSense, as well as more than likely October AdSense, two months. It's just, where is it? So my entire Halloween special, uh, all those massive videos I worked on 
uh, everything I worked on in September and October, I will probably not receive a dime for unless YouTube makes up some sort of severance package. But I mean, like that's, that's, it's hard because, um, if Defy Media declares bankruptcy, which to my knowledge, they have not yet. I'm not sure what the difference between shuttering a company is and straight up bankruptcy. But that money that I have accrued over the past couple months of making videos has gone somewhere. And I swear to God, if it has gone to the CEOs of this company paying off their debt, that's just not right. That's criminal. That's criminal. That's uh, jail time, to be honest. So it's a dirty situation and it's very, it's very frightening. Um, so yeah, I obviously have not seen AdSense for September or October. Uh, I also did two sponsorships for them during that period in which I was supposed to be paid through an ad agency that was connected to the company that I did a sponsorship for. I've been in contact with them and they're very apologetic. They've been very open about it. Because the problem is, Defy was supposed to receive a percentage of that sponsorship payment as well. And so now this company, the ad, the ad agency, is trying to figure out what the legality is of just paying me what I'm earned. Because they were also supposed to pay a percentage of it to Defy. I just said to them, I was like, look, clear, clear, uh, clearly Defy didn't give a shit about my contract. You know? Just figure out what you, what you want to do. So I'm waiting on that. That money was supposed to go to my college tuition for the, spon the sponsorship money. I was going to put a dent in my college tuition. And now, if I can receive that, it's probably just going to have to be stretched out to pay my bills for the next like two or three months until I can get a normal AdSense check. It took a few days even for Defy to unlink my channel. So even after they closed for like a day or two, I was still earning someone money in Defy. Here's the problem. Uh, YouTube allowed me to be in a pilot program this year. I was one of the few selected for this program that allowed me to self-rate the content in my videos, which means that there's a, a smaller chance that my videos would get demonetized because I can say, while it's still unlisted, there's no excessive profanity or violence or any of that. And then there's a greater chance of, of not getting demonetized. Because of that, that means I can no longer bulk monetize my videos. So when Defy finally unlinked from me, and then YouTube approved me for partnership, which they expedited because it usually takes like a month, I emailed them. I was like, it can't take a month. Uh, please approve me. And they were like, they will we'll get it done. And they approved me for partnership. It was like 2011 all over again. <laughs> Flashbacks. And then I, um, I click the select all videos box and I'm like, okay, just monetize them all. Yay, I can go to sleep now. Then I get this notification that says I cannot bulk monetize my videos because I'm in this pilot program and I have to go to all 1,300 of my videos and monetize them manually separately while answering those questions about whether or not they have profanity or sexual themes or violence 1300 times apparently. Um, so that's just, that's not gonna happen. What, I mean, what do you want me to do? Just spend like two weeks clicking boxes? So I emailed YouTube about that and they're trying to find a workaround for it. And uh, so that's, that's the Defy Media bullshit right now. There's so much about this that I want to talk about. For one, there are so many other YouTubers who are completely out of money who maybe didn't have any savings. Uh, there's one person in particular, uh, Ian Forty, I believe is his name, uh, who is asking for donations because he can't pay his rent, and he was with Defy. Uh, Mr. Sunday Movie is my buddy. We were talking privately before this, uh, before Defy... Um, finally unlinked us both like what do you do do, do you want to go public do you do, what's the legality of going public i talked to a lawyer who who said like look uh it's good to go public but be respectful um and that's that's fine i try to do that anyway i mean even right now i'm trying to see the, the humor in this situation which there isn't much but um 
if it wasn't for Patreon, uh, this month would have been really tight because that's really helped uh, keep Sam and I afloat for the first, when all those bills came out, you know, we were like, hey, where's the, the money that we're, we were going to put towards my schooling and then some things that Sam is working on. And so uh, I had a few people ask me if they could give me donations, which I'm super flattered by, but please don't worry about me. It's okay. There are other people who need it more like Ian Forty, you know, some, some other people need it more than me. So just, you know, don't worry about me. It's fine. Um, I just, I guess I'm going public about it and talking more about it because I want networks out there to know they can't do this to people. You can't do this to people. This isn't just, I, the thing is like, we see so much news nowadays through Twitter mostly. And it's like, it goes in one ear, out the other, it's gone, it's forgotten. Crazy, atrocious, horrific things happen every day. And then that something else horrific happens the next day. And you're like, okay, well, that's the next thing. And we forget about things. This is actually kind of gigantic. A major YouTube company just vanished and they owe people potentially millions. Um, that's really bad. Like I said, that's possible jail time if, if, if taken to court. Um, and it's, it's just not right. I'm in post-production now on a short film I worked on this year, and I've had to halt that. I have a sound mixer that I was going to pay to finish the sound mix. Uh, music is being composed for it. Color correction. And in some visual effects shots. And I have had to basically just say, um, sorry, can we wait? I've had to freeze a lot of things like that because of Defy. Um, and I was trying to get it done so I could meet that deadline for submission to the Cleveland International Film Festival. Because I would love if I could get it into there, because I'm from Ohio and it'd be great. Like, it'd be really inspiring. And I've had to just halt all of that because I can't, you know, I had to take the savings we have and just be like, okay, I'm going to have to wait a second and make sure we can pay our bills. And it's really awful. So um, that's what's going on with the Defy. As of right now, my AdSense has returned to normal, but I'm still waiting for YouTube to get back to me to monetize all of my other 1,300 videos. I, I spent like an hour and I got like 100 of them monetized just myself, clicking like the most recent ones. So uh, hopefully YouTube gets back to me on that. Um, I am looking for another network. I'll figure it out. Or I might just stay AdSense, go old school, because that could be fun. Uh, totally completely independent like the old days. Anyway, guys, um, I just wanted to be really upfront and transparent about that. Uh, it sucks for, for a lot of people. I mean, Smosh was there. Shane Dawson said some shit about it on Twitter. And, you know, it's just a pile of awfulness <laughs> that hopefully gets itself worked out soon. Um, but I guess my goal with this video is to just make sure that networks don't do this again to be a voice that allows people to not only raise awareness about what's going on with Defy Media and what they did to so many other people, but also hopefully be of some solace to other people who are in Defy in the same situation as me to let you guys know that, hey man, you're not alone. And if we all band together, we'll make it through it and find a way out. Um, if I receive any other updates about this situation, I'll probably post it on my Twitter. Um, I talked about it on my Patreon podcast as well. I, I let them know first, because honestly, if it wasn't for them, uh, this month would have been kind of scary. So thank you very much to the people who have subscribed to my Patreon. That is means the world. So, um, But like I said, there's other people who are in a worse position, who don't have as big of a channel, who don't have as big of a voice, who don't have like those contacts that I have through my almost a decade now of doing this. And, and those people need help. Um, Ian 4D being one of them, check out his Twitter. He's got a donation page. So uh, guys, thank you so much for continuing to watch and for continuing to support. Um, going forth, hopefully a situation like this doesn't happen again. Uh, for anybody else who was involved with Defy, I'm very sorry for, for you having to deal with all of this shit. As more news comes out, I'm sure there will be more to come out about Defy and their shady dealings behind the scenes. It's uh, it's not good. But uh, thank you for everyone who has stayed by my side. 
One last thing, um, just in case you are perhaps considering, well, yeah, new media, it's going nowhere. It's a sinking ship. You shouldn't put your faith in uh, new media. You know, look what happens. Um, I understand what you are saying, but there's no such thing as a completely secure job. I bet you the CEO of Blockbuster in the 80s and 90s thought he was fine. Pretty sure the CEO of Toys R Us for a while there was like, yeah, it's all good. Any job you can get fired from or laid off. Any job. Trust me. If you saw my podcast preview where John Flickinger and I talked about our jobs we had before YouTube, I've done the grind. I have done every normal job you could think of in the book before doing this. Jim Carrey said something really amazing in his, uh, the documentary for um, The Man on the Moon that's on Netflix. He said uh, he learned by watching his father, who could have been a great comedian, but settled for a normal job because he thought that normal job would be safe. His father got fired from that normal job. So Jim Carrey said, I learned that you could compromise at what you really want to do and still fail. So you might as well do what you want to do. That's my opinion on that. Guys, thank you so much as always for watching. I look forward to more reviews very soon. I will have videos coming. I just didn't want to make Defy Media any other money. I had to wait until my channel was unlinked from them because, you know, obviously for a good reason. Thank you guys as always. Look forward to more reviews very soon. I'll see you soon.